Hello, everybody. My name is Big Citrus, and let's get into it. It feels good to be back. Well, sometimes. We are back with another What Your Overwatch 2 main says about you. I'm going to assume if you're watching this, you've watched one of the previous videos or some other, uh, you know, streamers or content creators who have been imitating my, my wondrous craft. I'm going to assume you know how this works, but in case you don't, I'm willing to explain it. I'm going to be judging you. Yes, you behind the screen, purely based off what character you main in this funny little video game called Overwatch. I'm gonna be judging how you look, taste, smell, breathe, fart, everything. Now, remember what I always say when it comes to these videos. Stereotypes are not always true. Of course not. But they do exist for a reason. And I'm not trying to make anyone mad. If I say you're a poopy head McDum Dum because you're one of three Torbjorn mains in the entire world and you should just play a more versatile character, I don't actually think you're a poopy head McDum Dum. Well, I might a little bit. Timestamps will obviously be in the description because I am doing, again, every hero. And there are a lot of new heroes I haven't talked about and I have a lot of new opinions because Overwatch it's been changing recently hopefully for the better it seems like for the better I don't know I'm always scared when it comes to this game I know most Overwatch fans are always scared <laughs> I'm not gonna waste any time I am just going to jump into this one but I will say I have been streaming three times a week at least on this channel and on my twitch at the same time so you know you can pick whatever platform you'd like to watch me on we've been grinding a top 500 we've been experimenting some strategies and the lower ranks just kind of seeing what works and what doesn't you know getting into the mind of a low rank player we're gonna be doing community events probably community tournaments if you're interested and of course I'm doing VOD reviews where if you send in something to my community discord which is also in the link in the description I'll review it on stream and perhaps make fun of you perhaps not we'll see my goal ultimately is to try and save overwatch because i love this game and i've been using the hashtag it's not overwatch recently because it's really stupid and i think it's funny i genuinely do love this game and compared to every other game on the market i think overwatch is still the best that's why i decided to make this video because i don't want to see this game die but before we can save this game i gotta talk about what your overwatch 2 mains is about you like and comment follow the links in the description you know the drill and let's get into it You know, usually I like to start these uh, videos off on a bit of a safer note with a character that's made by a lot of people and is easy to pin down a stereotype for, but I want to talk about Junker Queen first solely because she is just honestly one of my favorite heroes in all of Overwatch. And look, I'm going to try my best not to be biased. I do my best, but you know, sometimes it's hard. If you main Junker Queen, there is a very good chance that you are someone who gets bored very easily. You don't really want to play some sort of shield tank where you're just standing there trying to play like a, you know, fucking high level chess game with the enemy opponent to see who's going to drop their shield first and you know misuse their first ability and just stand still at the choke point just having a staring competition no you just want to go in you don't care about the game of chess you flip the board over and you just go straight into the enemy team's back line sometimes you're going to get absolutely annihilated for sure but for the most part you are someone who if you are going in the back line if you are rushing into the enemy team using your shout hoping that all of your teammates come with you even though most of the time they don't you are taking at least one person back alive with you because you do take no prisoners i've said it in the last two videos i've made on this but the chances of you having a dami mommy fetish are just like through the roof and i see a fair amount of female players play a junker queen and you know it's because they either want to be junker queen or they want to be like you know, I genuinely do just love her like exuberant, like bold, brash personality. Her voice lines, even though they can be a little annoying sometimes, are endlessly quotable. And her playstyle is just genuinely fun. She's just honestly one of the best balanced heroes in Overwatch 2. There are a lot of times at Junker Queen where you're like, hmm, should I swap? But then, you know, you, you look at the scoreboard and see you have more damage than both of your DPS combined. And you're like, eh, I'll keep playing JQ. Someone who's an actual Junker Queen main is probably very good at all tech tanks, but just specifically loves playing JQ. As a Junker Queen main, you, there is no more satisfying feeling in the world than just sniping someone in the back with your knife and pulling them straight towards you and then hitting them with carnage and just insta-killing them. You will never get a better high from meth or cocaine. That is the thing that fuels your blood. I am a big fan of most of them, and they're usually pretty good at the game. A lot of the times, they're not going to swap when they need to, and sometimes they're going to be a bit toxic in chat, but that kind of goes for any Overwatch main, as you'll see. But if you see, like, a genuine bona fide Junker Queen main on your team, you should probably just play with them and just try and rush into the enemy team's colon as fast as you can.
I feel like as Overwatch 2 has gone on, Sojourn has become kind of a little less popular. Partially because when she first came out, she was brand spanking new. Oh, and let's not forget the fact that she was ridiculously overpowered. If you weren't there at first when Overwatch 2 first dropped, you just, you wouldn't get it. Mercy Pocket and Sojourn was probably one of the most annoying things to ever have to deal with in all of Overwatch's history. And a lot of people who are currently manning Sojourn are still kind of left over from that time period. They're not really sure what to do with this character that they still play, not being as strong as she once was. But hey, they're still around regardless. A lot of Sojourn mains are very good. They're that very, you know, typical sweaty, I only play DPS kind of player. A lot of the same people who just play characters like that are really like high skill ceiling, but not always the most effective in certain situations like Echo, Tracer, Genji. Now you're going to see this at this video. A lot of DPS mains are just insanely toxic and only care about winning, not having fun and who has the highest stats in the lobby. And as if it's not them, that they're, they're going to be upset. They're going to blame other people. They're going to make excuses. Excuses. Sojourn mains honestly really are not exempt from this. In fact, I would say out of a lot of the newer DPS mains, they are some of the most toxic. I'm not saying they're bad, but I'm just saying if there is one person who does one dumb thing, even if it's like fucking 45 seconds into the match, they will complain. I'm not going to say this is someone you don't want on your team, but this is not going to be someone that's going to be very fun to play with if things aren't going well. You know, sometimes when they're old and they pop their voice line, you know, the entire enemy team turns into JFK, poking their head out of the car window, getting shot from the grassy knoll, and the Sojourn main will feel very good about themselves before having to go back and just playing like the most like sweaty experience of their entire life, just having to like always have their railgun at max charge just in case someone pokes their head out. If there is a mercy on the team and you do not pocket the Sojourn, they will ask you to pocket them or at least be, you know, very upset about it. Like like I said before, not the worst person to have on your team. Definitely gonna get toxic. But hey, at least they'll usually be pretty decent at the game. So I, there are worse things. Kiriko, in my opinion, has kind of become the new poster girl of Overwatch 2. She is insanely marketable, and she gets, like, a new skin almost every season, every single event. Everyone knows a lot about her character and everything, and she's probably, yeah, the poster girl for Overwatch 2. Because of this, Blizzard is very aware of this, has been making new skins, giving her new lore when they can and everything, always including her in, like, new seasonal events, all that stuff and whatnot. She has rarely, if ever, been nerfed. She only ever gets a slap on the wrist because they know that if they nerf her into the floor, people will play the game less and less. She is one of the most played Overwatch characters, like, ever, actually. People love Kiriko, and Blizzard is not going to stop giving her love anytime soon. Now, actually putting down a specific stereotype for Kiriko can be a little difficult because, yes, I could say, oh, it's the cat ear headset wearing e-girls playing in her PJs with their pink matching setup. Definitely have their name as some sort of Senrio character, drinking their Starbies and their Boba all that stuff, but so many people play Kiriko that I don't think that's true. Many, many high-level Overwatch pros and top 500 players play her because she's honestly just always effective pretty much at any rank, and they only encounter to that goddamn purple grenade. If you are someone who loves doing damage as a healer, Kiriko, no matter what, is always going to be one of your first choices. A lot of people who play Kiriko either have an insanely passive play style or an insanely aggressive play style. It's hard to ever see a mix. They either heal bot or are always trying to snipe a support in the back line with double kunai and just going crazy. You will find Kiriko mains at every rank from bronze to top 500. I'm not going to say Kiriko mains are the best support players, because a lot of them honestly do just focus way too much on heal botting. Shockingly, even though a lot of support mains don't like to admit it, they can get really, really toxic. Yeah, sure, most of them will be nice, you know, telling you to group up and everything, you know, oh, telling you, okay, come back so I can heal you, but a lot of them deep down want to tell you, you dumb motherfucker, if you don't come here right now, I'm going to fucking kill you. You have been throwing this entire game. If you want healing, you better get inside of my ass now. Just say things like that. Kiriko mains are definitely no different. For sure. Without a shadow of a doubt in my mind, Kiriko will continue to be popular and people will continue to keep maining her. Now, we always have to have a discussion when it comes to support mains. Are you a top or are you a bottom? And we're going to do this for every support main in this video. Kiriko mains like to think they're the top, but deep down they are the bottom. All there is to it. You know I'm right, baby. Moving on. Now, unlike Kiriko mains, yes, most D.Va mains are just the epitome of the Overwatch e-girl. In fact, D.Va mains kind of pioneered the e-girl stereotype on the internet. You know, it's been seven years of people maining D.Va. They may not slay the enemies, but they, they slay in real life, you know? Kill you, 
yourself. Their favorite colors are going to be pink, purple, or red. They do have some sort of cat ear themed something like their headset, their mouse, their fucking keyboard. Like something's gonna have pussy on it. Definitely into Sanrio characters. Definitely was someone who probably used to watch like makeup YouTube, like beauty people, and you know, the years ago when that was popular. Definitely someone whose favorite game will always be Overwatch and honestly, really nothing else. Look, yeah, are there some guys who main D.Va? There's a 20% chance that they are gay, and there's an 80% chance that they're gay, and they just don't know it yet. Hey, nothing wrong with that. I've been there before, you know what I mean? But how do D.Va mains actually play? They are the type to get frustrated very quickly. Like, if they have somebody one-shot and they're not able to kill them, it will haunt them for the next, like, five minutes of the match. They do not give a fuck if the enemy team has a tank counter like Zarya. They just want to keep playing D.Va. They, they do not want to swap ever. There's someone who will be very passive at times, very aggressive at other times. Sometimes those be sitting in the back, just, you know, shooting their little gun from, like, a million miles away, like, you know, for, like, 10 points of damage each, and just holding defense matrix at nothing. Sometimes they will be fucking going in there, in the support's backline, dicking them down. Defense matrix thing, every single ability, you know, hitting that micro-missile combo directly in a character's jaw. Common thing about Diva mains is they do think way too hard about how they're going to throw their ult, even if it literally gets nobody. They're always gonna put 900 hours into thinking about it. Being aggressive is their forte when they have an opportunity to. Otherwise, if they're like weak and scared, they turn into the little submissive fucking e-girl discord kit, and they are, and just stand in the back just holding defense matrix for nine hours. This is someone who, if they are in fact doing better than everybody in the lobby, they will make sure to let everyone know it. They are proud. They are stunting their shit. Chances are, if they are a diehard even man, this is someone who's been playing Overwatch on and off for the last seven years. Not that it's always been the only game they played. They probably played other games like Apex or Valorant. Honestly, I enjoy having most diva mains on my team because at the very least, they are usually pretty experienced and good at diva. So if you can just play around the fact that they are never willing to swap half the time, you could usually have a pretty good match. <laughs> no hate to my diva mains. I, I love your pastel pink, you know, matching setup and everything. I hope you enjoy your toasted white almond mocha from Starbucks or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> Junkrat has always been one of the most controversial heroes in Overwatch, but I like him. He's a silly little guy. I'm guessing most Junkrat mains feel the same way. Can he be annoying? Should his passive literally not exist? Why the fuck does Martyr Dome exist? Like, this is the dumbest passive in Overwatch. Why was this added and why has it not been changed for seven years? It's not even that good. It's just annoying when it actually kills you. Without a doubt, Junkrat is a character that does not take a lot of skill, but let's be clear. There is a lot that separates someone who is brand new to the game trying Junkrat out for the first time. You know, seven-year-old little Timmy from professional DPS sweat lord. XX uh, Funky Cheese 62 that has a thousand hours on Junkrat. They're gonna know a lot of text that they could do with his mines, rip tire, and everything. And they are going to know the exact damage numbers for every ability that Junkrat has. And you know, the, just, the, just the splash radius distance on rip tire. Like, they are going to know everything. A lot of Junkrat mains get scared when they see a Pharah or Echo in the air. Not these people. These people will fly straight towards them and try and fucking eat those motherfuckers out of the sky. All the there are a lot of Junkrat mains, though, who are very new to the character and are, in fact, just playing it because he's ridiculous ridiculously easy. I'm not saying that if you main Junkrat, you are bad at Overwatch. There is just an insanely high chance that you're a very inexperienced player and you play Junkrat because you can just have like two fingers and play him and get a lot of value out of him at any rank. I feel like a lot of Junkrat mains, like when they get one of those kills where they're just shooting random grenades into the back line and they actually end up getting a kill. Like they probably feel really guilty that two nades just happen to hit somebody all the way like 800 miles away, but you know. It makes them chuckle and happy and giddy nonetheless. Again, you know, similarly enough, kind of the Junker Queen mains is someone who just loves chaos and gets bored very easily and will always be trying to flank, get in the back line, you know, spank somebody, do something crazy. You will commonly find Junkrat mains more at lower ranks simply because at this point, someone who's more experienced with Overwatch will have moved on to other, you know, quote unquote, better, you know, harder to play DPS characters that make them feel like they're better at the game. And I get that on console, I used to be a Junkrat main, it was one of my most played characters ever since I played PC. I just don't really touch it that much because I feel scummy. And that's what a lot of junk rat mains are. They're scummy, but in a delicious, great way. One of the great things about watching Overwatch 2's development over the course of the last year is that a lot of characters change for the better, and a lot of things about the games have been very different. A lot of characters have got new abilities, have been designed differently. But one of the little, you know, characters that has just remained the same and just such 
a rat is Moira. Honestly, I would consider this character more of a rat than Junkrat themselves. I know, Moira mains are incredibly insecure about the character they main, and a lot of them like to say, how can I be bad at the game when I have the most damage and healing in the lobby? I don't know, it's crazy. It's almost like literally just holding left mouse on something does damage to something while healing you, which artificially inflates your stats, making it look like you're doing a lot more than you actually are. Moira is honestly, I have always said this, one of the characters that I just feel like doesn't belong in the game mechanically. She doesn't really take any sort of skill or knowledge of like how a PS game works to play. I'm not saying all Moira mains are bad. I'm just saying that a lot of them play Moira because it's the only character they can play. To be fair, a lot of them are lower rank players who just play Overwatch for fun and there's nothing wrong with that. And they're usually really nice and really chill and mostly just interested in Moira because of the lore. If you are a gay woman, you do probably look at her and just think, yeah, this is someone who will clip every single call essence like four man, five man kill they get, even though it's it's just shooting a fucking giant laser beam and just flying around. It does it's a it fucking it feels like I'm watching someone play Bloom's Tower Defense. I don't necessarily hate Moira Mains, I just hate the character in general. I don't blame a lot of people for playing her. Hey, if there was a healer option where you could just dive straight into the back line and suck everybody off and have an ability where you can just press a button, fly across the map and be invulnerable to damage and constantly be healing yourself and everything, I you know I, I do it too. I get it. it. It's fun sometimes. But actually maining Moira, that is some degenerate generate behavior. Now, is Moira the worst designed character in Overwatch? Yes. Are people who main Overwatch typically really bad at other characters, you have even other easier healers like Lucio? Usually. Do I get tons of toxic comments from Moira mains and my comments telling me that I actually apparently am dog shit at Overwatch 2 compared to them and they carry every single match that they play and without them, their team would crumble to dirt, fall into ash, never to rise again. I got a lot of those too. And honestly, nothing will ever change my opinion of this character. Fuck Moira. Although if you're someone who just plays this character because they like her lore and they want to get topped by Moira and they just play this game for fun and casually and honestly just play her because they find her fun, I legitimately have no problem with you. In fact, honestly, this is kind of more the players Overwatch need. Malga is the new tank hero on the scene, and I am happy to finally see him in action. It only took five years, but, you know, we're finally here. And I won't lie, all of his abilities look insanely fun to play with. Like, his ult cage fight, I, I mean, it just looks sick. Sure, I imagine a lot of his abilities are gonna be really annoying in practice, but he just seems like the actual, like, epitome of what people wanted Malga to be. Just this big-ass motherfucker with big-ass guns who just does not give a fuck and is just here to cause chaos, which is honestly the best kind of tank. I'm genuinely really excited for him, and I feel like he's gonna be similar to people who main characters like Reinhardt or Drunk Queen, just an absolute Giga Chad bro, who, even if they need to swap, aren't necessarily going to, just solely because they are having so much fun and are causing so much havoc. One of the great things about a game like Overwatch is that they can add characters that don't necessarily do that much different necessarily from the characters, but can still feel huge. Every time a new hero comes out in a game like Overwatch or Apex, a lot of people just start to main them because they want to get ahead of the curve, you know, main the new character everything but i can sense a lot of people are gonna play maga love him immediately and stick to him for a life I feel like you don't see that many Cole Cassidy from Fortnite mains anymore. If you don't know why I'm calling him Cole Cassidy from Fortnite, it is because there are still some people who call him <clears throat> Jesse McCree. I get it, it was named like five years. But it's a situation I really don't like talking about, and as longtime viewers of the channel know, I call him Cole Cassidy from Fortnite. Cole Cassidy from Fortnite mains usually do devolve into the sweaty DPS archetype. In fact, I would say Cole Cassidy mains, if there's someone who's been playing him for a while, are kind of the originators of this stereotype. They won't swap even if they need to because they're quote unquote doing good and carrying and you guys are fucking trash, look at my damage. Even though stats don't actually represent your impact on the match a lot of the time. And if they hear a female in the lobby, they'll cuss them out just because they a woman. Most of them, while they are pretty decent in the game, think that they are much better than they actually are. If you're someone who ever got an Overwatch in Main Cassidy, I'm gonna guess that you're someone who played a lot of games like Cobb and Rainbow Six Siege, Battlefield, just any game where you can shoot a big gun. And you have always loved the skill shot aspect of Cassidy, and he is just so, so satisfying to you. I feel like a lot of people who main him are either like top 500 DPS sweat lords, or there's someone who just got out of the game and wants to play the cowboy character, because look, he's a cowboy, high and new. He's 
12 o'clock, yippee. I will say, I've never met a Cole Cassidy from Fortnite main who is someone that I would call a very uh, exuberant or exciting player. Like, yeah, they might do some crazy shit in game, but you know, they're always just very low key, very chill, unless it's time to, you know, get angry. And then they're quite loud. Most of them, yep, only care about winning. Yep, only care about their rank. Yep. But I will admit, if there's someone who's a genuine Cassidy main, even if they haven't been playing him for that long, they're usually pretty good at the game. They know that everyone complains about the magnetic gay nade. Uh, Cole Cassidy from Fortnite mains don't really care. They 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 just they think it's funny when they just stick someone with it from 9,000 meters away and suddenly they can't move. It, it amuses them. Look at them struggle, it's funny. If you ask me how I felt about like Cole Cassidy from Fortnite mains like four or five years ago, I would be putting them at like the very lowest on this list. I, I would not have a lot of nice things to say about them. Just only sweats, no fun to be had, and always a huge ego. But they've definitely chilled out over the years in my opinion. I really do go back and forth on how I feel about Lucio mains. Cause look, I don't dislike Lucio mains at all. Well, okay, sometimes, I, sometimes I do. I've said this before and I'll say it again. Lucio mains are probably the most consistently accurate stereotype I have been able to pin down. They always think of themselves as quote unquote, the funny friend. Someone who, no matter if they're not actually being funny, will always pursue a laugh, trying to make their friends, uh, you know, smile and uh, low-key be the center of attention. And that's how a lot of Lucio's play styles are. They want to just jump straight in the enemy's back line, always going for the boop, always going for the funny, you know, 1v5 sound barrier, always going for the triple wall ride rollout, trying to push someone off the map when they least expect, oh my god, I just walked out of my spawn five seconds ago, why is there a Lucio here? Probably a big Frogger fan and is like proficient in like every kind of Overwatch meme, Elon Musk style person where they repost themselves on Twitter is uh, the dank memer BF. Just just bottom of the barrel level of cringe. Lucio mains are actually really similar to D.Va mains in my opinion, because they have one of two play styles, passive little baby bitch or the most aggressive player you've ever seen. There will be no in between. This is someone who, if they're an aggressive player, oh my God, do they hate having to heal bot. Like yeah, they'll boost healing for maybe two or three seconds and then it's straight back to like frog wall riding craziness, which is honestly how I prefer to play Lucio. A diehard Lucio main either times the sound barriers perfectly to the microsecond. Like sometimes they'll just do a little hop just to delay it so it hits at the perfect time or all of their sound barriers are off by like three or four seconds somehow it can get pretty bad sometimes if we're being truthful I feel like Ramatra mains have been somewhat difficult to find since the release of the character. Not that they don't exist in everything, and I have seen definite stereotypes for them, but it just kind of feels like it's one of those heroes that I feel like he hasn't really found like a dedicated fan base yet, except for a group with one people. If you are someone who grew up loving Transformers, or maybe the droids from Star Wars are oh, cool ass robots and shit. You wanted to be a robot as a child. You wanted your own army of robots. You probably, for the most part, in Overwatch 2, just play the robot characters. So like Zen, like Bastion, maybe Echo, but especially Ramatra. You are someone who just thinks that the lore and the story of the Omnic Crisis and everything with Ramatra and Zenyatta is just so cool, and that is one defining reason you play him. A true Ramatra main will always bring up the April Fool's voice line and the grape flavored agony or whatever the fuck he says and Loki wishes that was just the normal old voice line they love popping their ult just so they can get nemesis form back and then just completely be invincible running into the enemy team like a freight train until they get slept or, or, or trapped and then they're very sad but in terms of negating damage and nemesis form much remains are one of two ways they either are going to do it religiously like if they take like on like a hundred damage they're just gonna be putting them fist to cuff stuff just you know take it all the damage just brute force in fact, I feel like some Macho mains literally don't know that he can block damage in Nemesis form. They're either gonna bang, 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 drop you like fucking Muhammad Ali, or they are literally going to like somehow they're gonna get outstrafed by an Ana who like is not even trying to dodge their shots and they just can't hit anything. I would say Ramacha mains are some of the more toxic tank mains. Like they're definitely more prone to getting angry as compared to other heroes. This is one of those tank mains where if they see a DPS or a healer, just someone going completely into the enemy team's back line and just trying to fucking 1v5 and just in their face, they will scream at them back up, back up, because in their mind, they're the only people who should be pushing right into the enemy team's asshole.
So I'll admit, rework Sombra makes me sad. So I get that they want to make Sombra kind of a get in, get out more character. Like she can just disappear in the blink of an eye, but she doesn't really have like a like a real ratty health pack nest just to sit on the whole match, which I understand. If you're a Sombra main, you feel one of two ways about the rework. You're like me and you're just completely disappointed. And even though the character is still really similar to how she used to play and doesn't even feel like too much of a rework, it definitely is disappointing because it just feels like the people who have been mating her this whole time getting better at her now have this new play style that isn't necessarily hard to learn, but is just not necessarily as fun to play. Or this is something you've always wanted for Sombra and you're very excited that you finally got it. My review is, yeah, I'm not a huge fan. Sombra mains are very weird players because Sombra is definitely their favorite hero and it's almost like an art form for them. And because Sombra is such a unique character, they like that in a way they can kind of counter a lot of heroes and they have memorized every single health pack location, every single map, and they definitely have some sort of voice line bound. Yep, probably boop, probably that one. They are like a collector. They have every single Sombra skin, voice line, emote. They have everything when it comes to this woman. They are in love with Carolina Ravasa. This is someone who mechanically has to at least be a smart player. Maybe not a player who is insanely skilled with their aiming and everything, but this is someone who at least has to know the perfect time to get in and the perfect time to get out. They try their best to coordinate hacks with their team and like, all right, hack this guy, focus them around EMP, let's combo this ultimate uh, Cole Cassidy from Fortnite or D.Va. But you know, it's, it's really difficult sometimes when people just don't. A lot of Sombra mains get the stereotype pinned on them that they are rats, and this is true because that's how you have to play Sombra. And a good Sombra player is the ultimate rat, the giant rat that makes all of the rules. They'll be right behind you just sniffing your ass and you won't even know it. I met a f I've met a lot of Sombra mains who are nicer, but they're usually at the lower ranks. If I see a Sombra one-trick pony at the higher ranks, there's someone who, I mean, they just have they have a Google spread doc of insults and slurs, I swear to God. The Sombra mains are honestly pretty cool. They're probably diehard Overwatch fans, and in a way, they are kind of a beating heart of the community. Speaking of reworked heroes, we also have Zenyatta, who got not really a rework, but more of a huge fucking nerf. However, I think this nerf was justified because, man, just being one tank constantly discorded the entire match was just miserable. Zenyatta is still insanely good with his damage output, and just Discord is still just one of the best abilities in the game when you actually, like, have good micromanaging skills, and Transcendence is still a really good ultimate. Anyone who's saying that he got, like, nerfed into the floor was just, like, blatantly wrong. I have always been a Zenyatta enjoyer in standby that Zenyatta mains are actually some of the best mains to see in the game. Yes, they are a support player, but man, does Zenyatta take some skill when you're getting died by Tracer, Genji, Farah, Echo, Sombra, fucking ball, everybody. Again, very similar to Ramatra, probably love everything with the Omni Crisis and everything. They genuinely just love playing robot characters in literally every fucking game they play. And they think Zenyatta as the robot priest is the coolest. I have met some Zenyatta mains who are basically just one trick ponies and will just never, ever, 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 ever swap and can be uh, insanely toxic, sometimes just even for no reason. I thought, I thought y'all were about peace, what's going on? But for the most part, these guys are usually just total bros and sometimes are a better skill shot than some of the DPS they're gonna be in your lobby. Now with New Zenyatta, they're having to learn how to micromanage their Discord like it's fucking StarCraft, memorizing, oh, I just put Discord on that guy, so I can't put it on that guy when you swap it over to this person. They love Zenyatta's new kick, like it's when some fucking scummy DPS just dives them, just fucking BAM, right in the face, like the fucking mimic from Dark Souls 3. Guys, like in much of Zenyatta dialogue and interactions just from start to finish memorize, like, this person ultimately is pretty cool. They also don't care if there's not enough healing to go around for the whole team. They won't swap because fuck you. Peace and harmony, bitch. Reinhardt mains like to see themselves as the typical Giga Chad, and they usually are. You will find Reinhardt mains from bronze to top 500, and they all have the same mentality. I am a fucking superhero, and I will save my entire team from everything, and I will charge in the back line in literally 1v5 every round, every match, every second of every day. I basically said the same thing about Reinhardt mains in all these videos, because one thing in the universe is a constant, and that is how Reinhardt mains see themselves. And I'm not saying the reflection from the mirror is, you know, inaccurate or anything, but they definitely do have an ego. I feel like everyone could kind of play Reinhardt. He's like Bloodhound from Apex, Brim from Valor, and Soldier from TF2. Basically, anyone can kind of play Reinhardt if they need to. Not that every Reinhardt main has game sense, because they do just love be like, oh, that guy right there, he's alone, you know, does no get out ability, pin. Oh, there's one person right next to me trying to die me, pin. 
Oh, your grandmother's trying to cross the street in her wheelchair. <laughs> but you know, if you have a good support and a good team, you can usually get away with doing stupid shit like that. Reinhardt mains are either literally painters with their fire strike and could just compose a portrait of just utter carnage. Or there's someone who literally just like throws it into shields and like, you know, deflection abilities like Genji or Sigma. They use earth shatter in a variety of ways. Yeah, sometimes going for the quote unquote fatty shatty is great, you know, knocking down four or five people and then just your team just eating them alive. Or, you know, maybe that Tracer Sombra Lucio who's been bothering you the whole game needs to uh, be put in their fucking place. Black! Solo shattering is just is just fun. Or maybe it's just that one person who you're like, oh shit, that Moira is ulting, the Genji's ulting. <laughs> you're not anymore. Our Iron mains are usually total bros trying to at least coordinate the entire match. They're either going to just be like vibing to music or something on their second monitor, just like having a great time on Reinhardt, or they are literally just like in the face of war. Like they are, they are in this match. Like it is an IRL war zone. They are taking every minute, every second, every step seriously. Even if someone's new to Overwatch 2 and they just started maining Reinhardt, there's a very high chance that someone will be maining him for a long time. I'm not always going to say all Reinhardt mains are good. Some of them are definitely just shield babies who just are like, oh, I have 40,000 damage mitigated. That must be me. That must mean I'm doing a good job, which, you know, isn't always true. And some of them, they think just because they're playing Reinhardt that they are much, much, much better than they are. Like I said, they definitely have an ego. But for the most part, yes, they are, in fact, just just the best. Sometimes. Not always. Again, Soldier 76 is kind of like Reinhardt. I feel like everyone plays him, and finding a genuine, actual, dedicated Soldier main means they've probably been playing him for a while, or if they just started maining Soldier, they're going to be playing him for, like, ever. Soldier mains do fall into that typical, oh, top 500, you know, incel DPS sweat who just plays DPS only. Soldier mains are kind of like the Swiss army knife of the Overwatch heroes. They can do long range damage, burst damage, close range damage, run away, distract the enemy, heal, and just genuinely give good comms and actually try and, you know, help the team out. I've met some of the most toxic people I've ever met on Overwatch, and yes, some of them have been Soldier 76 mains. Some of them are probably upset over the fact that they made him, quote unquote, a homosexual. But some of them do just fit into the dad archetype and everything, you know, I, I just want to grill for God's sakes and Soldier speaks to them. Obviously, of course, this is to draw in the Call of Duty players and everything, and people who just play more stereotypical FPS games, so for that reason, you will see a lot of people just immediately latch on to Soldier because of that reason. This is the kind of person to take a game so seriously, they probably do like aim trainers and like practice before every competitive match. Also, yes, this person does in fact just like only play competitive. At the very least, when it comes to people who play Soldier 76, you can assure that they will always at least be decent at the game. Of course, if they're a lower rank soldier main, they're probably just playing him because he's one of the hit scan that's like the easiest to pick up and everything. They either will only pop tactical visor when comboing with another ult, even if it's not necessary, like the earth shatter, just shoot them, they're on the floor. Or they just do it like literally whenever they just fucking are losing a situation because it's tac visor. They, you know, they're so good, they don't even need to aim better. If you see someone who has like a thousand or something hours on soldier, you know their tracking is going to be crazy. They probably are looking for a Discord e-girl mercy pocket or, you know, already have one. I haven't made a new song for any of these videos in a while, and a lot of people seem to really like them, you know, judging by the Spotify numbers. Given that Soldier Mains usually like COD so much, I figured I'd show this one off. Enjoy. Link in the description. Pull up uninvited to your house, like step it will front it down your whole fucking block. I don't give a fuck, drop them this war zone. Gonna make the industry watch while I fuck the game like that. Cook, I fuck the bitch good for hours and hours. Then she let me hit again at like the second tower. Yeah, I know I'm clever. Yeah, I know I'm better. I get money while I want to watch a white sweater. I switch my persona like a Heisenberg. I relax for three seconds, then it's back to work because I always got more. Ops to kills. I'm making my board the plans like a morning after bill. They like subway chicken, they ain't for real. I'm like Cali Mandel, cause this deal or no deal. This ain't clean like soap is more of a micro off feel. Cold eyes, cold cast, and I got a heart that won't heal. Alright, we've arrived at Mercy Mains. I am literally going to be making an entire video in the coming weeks talking about are Mercy Mains actually that bad? Because out of all of the mains in all of Overwatch, I think they are definitely the ones that are the most discussed and the most discussed as being, you know, bad. Not just like bad people, but also like bad at the game. And we're going to break it down. We're really going to see like we're going to you know have some scientific game theory and see are Mercy Mains really that bad? So make sure you're subscribed and the notifications on to see that video. So you know, if you're a Mercy Main, you can, of course, defend your honor. And if you are a Mercy Main, give me your honest opinions on how you feel people's criticism about Mercy Mains, if it's true or not, in the comments. But anyways, 
What do I think? I want to save some thoughts for that video, obviously, but for the most part, my opinion and Mercy Mains have not changed. They are the stereotypical. I know some people say this is reductionist and everything, but it's usually true. And fuck it, I've already been reductionist. You are an e-girl who is a bottom. Overwatch and Mercy is like not just a video game to you. It is a way of fucking life. You've collected every Mercy skin, voice line, emote, you have Mercy merch in real life, you have everything. You practice Mercy parkour, you practice super gliding, your name is like Lil Mochi Bun, your name is fucking some Sam and Rio shit, your name is Cinnamon Roll, you or it's like something more elegant, it's like Aura, or like Flame Heart, and you've probably been playing Mercy for a long time. You either talk a lot in voice chat because you're just genuinely trying to be talkative and you know, get people to talk back because you deep down know if they hear a cute female talking into the mic, people will talk back and listen to me. If you do talk, you only use text chat and you're usually like sassy as fuck or you may just in fact be the gayest bottom in the entire world like you are the final boss of twinks a lot of people ask me citrus who's better the twinks or the e-girls at mercy the e-girls some of these gay men that i see are usually pretty good at mercy they try to play a lot more aggressive which mercy honestly just isn't the best support for doing that and it kind of always seems like they would just be better off playing a different healer sometimes it is better than the heal bot mercies who just care about having the most healing in the lobby and that's like the only stat they pay attention to and they're like ah, i have the highest number i have the best player in the world mercy mains can get incredibly toxic they probably have ran at least one stan account in their life on Twitter or Instagram. Some days on Overwatch, they genuinely feel like ripping all their hair out and doing a swan dive off a 20-story building, but they keep playing it every day. They are addicted. It is like fucking crack to them. The amount of like Overwatch memes and like stand culture memes they have saved in their phone probably takes up like half of their fucking hard drive. This is someone who probably was like waiting forever for the zombie mercy skin to come into the shop. And the moment it came out, they bought it either because they just already had the pink mercy skin and they just need more pink mercy skins, or they didn't have the pink mercy skin and they know that this is the best they're ever going to get. Like I said, I'm going to say more thoughts with the videos. So yeah, I've also been streaming a lot on this channel and everything. So you'll hear more of my thoughts there on Twitch and YouTube. Follow the links in the description. Mwah. Taking it back to some of the rework characters, let's talk about Roadhog. People have been asking for a Roadhog rework for like, uh, I don't know, five years. And I definitely understand why. He was really the first tank that felt like, oh, why is this character a tank and not just a bigger DPS hero? What's what's going on? And he wouldn't be the last. Ever since the launch of Overwatch 2, diehard dedicated Roadhog mains are usually just considered one thing. Because playing Roadhog consistently on Overwatch 2 is really only dependent on the meta. Sometimes the meta revolved around Roadhog, and then now, after the rework and everything, it's very odd to say where he is, and I know a lot of Roadhog mains have certain opinions about it. Simply just stating the obvious, he's not that different. What, what they basically did to Roadhog is they made his killing potential worse, and now he's harder to kill and he's more annoying to play against, so I, I guess he does slot better into the tank role. I can only assume if someone's an actual genuine Roadhog main, they are someone who has been playing him forever. Like, like this is the hero that they have played since the game came out and they have never changed and they will never want to change. Roadhog mains are infatuated with the concept of just getting a hook and one-shotting somebody. That feeling is the most satisfying thing to them in the world and there's really no other character that could replicate that for them. Roadhog has gone through so many changes throughout the history of Overwatch, the history of Overwatch, not because they've changed Roadhog specifically that much, but more so because they've just changed the game so much and he's always had trouble finding a place. There are some actual Roadhog mains who legitimately think that the hook 2.0 wasn't that broken. They should restore it to its former glory. And uh, like, why? Well, you want to watch the fucking world burn, you psychopath. They do have a bit of an ego, just like kind of like Reinhardt mains. Like they think that they are just the carry, the Giga Chad, just the person who is always just doing whatever the fuck, not caring what everyone else thinks. And to be fair to some Roadhog mains, that is the truth. Some of the best Overwatch players have been really niche specific people who just only play Roadhog and have like hundreds of hours on him. And for some reason, that person just doesn't make a mistake in the whole match. Their positioning, their aim, and their game sense is just perfect from start to finish. It's very rare, but you will see them occasionally. You've obviously been seeing them a little bit more ever since the release of Roadhog 2.0, and I assume there are a lot of people who have been playing him a lot more recently because they like the trap ability, and they like the, the, the fact that he's so difficult to kill. Jesus Christ. I imagine we're gonna see a new slew of Roadhog mains rolling around in the pig pen. I'm not quite sure what they'll be, but they will definitely be interesting.
Farah is one of those characters where she's never really been great, but she's never really been bad. Unless you're on console back in the day where pharmacy was just so busted. In fact, I'm gonna bet dollars to donuts if you are a Farah main, you probably don't play on PC for that reason, because you know that people have a significantly harder time hitting you. A Farah main is definitely someone who, to in a small extent, is probably a bit obsessed with the Overwatch lore. Like, you know, you ship pharmacy, you just do. Also, you're probably a big fan of Ana and everything, and you love her too, and her lore. Some of the best Overwatch players I have ever met have been like Farah mains or Farah one tricks. They just get the art of movement in the air and hitting like great direct shots and everything. Probably a huge fan of Soldier on Team Fortress 2 and Rocket jumping around and they wish Farah had some sort of ability that was like market gardening someone. A true dedicated diehard Farah main. Never swaps. They never back down and they never give up. They will stay Farah the whole goddamn match. They do not give a shit. They know they can hit direct rockets every other shot like it's nothing so they don't really care what you think. Farah mains are kind of similar to Reinhardt mains. I will see them use Farah's ult to literally just solo ult one person who has been bothering them the whole match and they're happy that they were able to blow them into smithereens and literally just disintegrate them. Or they will actually try to go for team combos and whatnot and just hope that something can go right. I have met insanely toxic Farah mains who have this sort of god complex because they main this character that not a lot of people main, and because they're good at this character that not a lot of people play, they think they are significantly better than everyone else. But I have also met some of the most chill, like genuinely nice and like supportive people I have ever met in Overwatch that were Farah, like diehard mains. Most of you Farah mains are pretty good. Keep soaring through the skies, keep doing your thing, keep uh, maining your muscle mommy. I've seen a bit of a change with Ana mains recently, surprisingly. I've noticed a lot more lower rank players main Ana because they see some of the like the best, most skilled support mains play Ana, and they love Ana's personality and they want to play her too. And I have something to tell a lot of you. I, I don't mean to like gatekeep, but a lot of you are not good enough to play Ana. I don't understand why a lot of people main Ana who can't aim that's like the one support where aiming is super fucking important besides like bap i guess i think a lot of them just love the grandma personality they probably have like the candy emote they probably have like the like the trick or cheat candy emote equipped in some sort of voice line like good kitty or some bullshit in the desert oh i love that one and they more like her like infectious personality and they see themselves as the caretaker of the team and some of them are some automains will genuinely be kind of like a soldier a swiss army knife they can control a fight like nobody else with good stuns nades everything Thing. Shockingly, I feel like I meet more toxic Ana mains than I do nice ones usually. There's some of the support mains that definitely have the biggest ego, that's for sure. I don't know, it's probably because they play Ana and they used to play some character like Moira or Mercy or Lucio, you know, some quote unquote much easier support. And now they play Ana, which, you know, one of the hardest heroes in the game, one of the highest skill ceilings, so they think they're really good. There are two types of Ana mains, the passive heal bot or the aggressive DPS Ana. I'm not saying one's necessarily better than the other. Passive heal bot will have the most healing the lobby for sure will never even take pot shots at enemies that are one shot they will make sure that everyone on their team is 100 percent health at all times if someone's missing 10 health nope shot if someone if someone's about to get shot by something they're about to preemptively shoot them or preemptively nade them this is the kind of player who doesn't just use their sleep dart when it's off cooldown they use it only when it is needed and when someone's diving them when an ult or a big ability is coming through they literally will save it it's like the holy grail of abilities to them there's the aggressive dps on a player and then everything i said just went out the fucking window they do the exact opposite Opposite. They are pushing up with their tank and hip firing shots and because they know Ana's a great DPS. The moment sleep is off cooldown, they are trying to hit someone with sleep dart. Like the moment. And it's weird. I find that the passive heal bot Ana mains are the more toxic ones, and the aggressive DPS Anas who sometimes don't make the best decisions are the ones that are more cool and fun in chat. You know, I used to say you would only find Ana mains like at the high, high, high ranks, but it's kind of weird. Now you find them kind of everywhere. It's it's, it's very interesting. Literally, in, in the last video, I just say Winton, 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 and then I go on for like all of 25 seconds talking about how Winston mains are some of the most like experienced, like level-headed, smart, calculated, fearless players you'll ever find in Overwatch. And I got a bunch of comments from Winston mains telling me that I was exactly right and they thought my segment on Winston was excellent. So I, I feel like I don't need to expend much time on them again. This is an ag this is an aggressive, hot, million IQ calculated player who probably won't swap even if they need to. And sometimes does stupid shit just for a laugh because Winton.
There is not a single character on the Overwatch roster I am more biased towards than Echo. She is my favorite character. She is the one that I think takes the most skill. The truth is, in all of these videos, when I talk about Echo, I basically say, oh, she's an incredible hero, I love her and everything, everyone who plays her is really good and not toxic, but you know, that's not really the truth. Probably like 0.5% of people who play Overwatch actually main Echo. She's a hero that hasn't been out since the beginning of the game, and she is insanely hard to play for new players. So yes, for that reason, if you see someone who's actually a genuine Echo main, they may just be maining her because they love the concept of her character, with literally just being able to uh, turn into another hero mid match and show off their flex skills but like i said most people who main echo are people who've been playing overwatch for a while and they have landed on echo as the character they're going to main this is a character that requires precision to say the least i don't think you'll ever find an echo main that is bad at the game i couldn't imagine like maining this hero and sucking at her because it, it would just be like constant bullying You'd be getting bullied in-game, out-of-game, everything. It would just be a complete fucking nightmare. The thing is, I can't really say that I've met a toxic Echo main. Like, yeah, I'm sure they exist, especially with a hero that's that sweaty and everything, but for the most part, I feel like most Echo mains kind of just are the more silent type. They kind of probably just don't say much hell. They probably don't even enter team chat. They are just fully dialed in on the game. An Echo main is a professional sticky bomb spammer. The moment they see a tank with a fat ult like Reinhardt or Zarya that they can dupe, they are always always going for it. This is someone who doesn't need a mercy pocket, but oh my god, when they actually have one, they demolish. This player is a perfectionist, the kind of person who even the smallest, littlest mistakes eat them up inside and make them feel almost ill to their stomach, like they've dishonored their family. You're probably only gonna see these players like at the higher ranks, and you're probably only gonna see them one out of every like 5,000 matches, but when you fucking do, yeah, it's probably over. Even if you're good at hit scan, th th they'll be able to deal with you. Alari is one of the new heroes on the scene, and I don't like her. I know that she was a lot better before she got nerfed, like, really hard. I have seen actually a fair amount of people who really enjoy Alari, but I honestly think that's just from the kind of wonder of her being a new hero. Look, her healing turret, the pylon, is really good. That's it. That's not fair. The ultimate's good too, especially if your team actually focuses the targets that you've hit with the ult. And I'm not gonna lie, Face the Sunrise is an amazing ass ultimate voice line, one of the best. I like her lore in her backstory, but her character, it doesn't really stand out compared to a lot of the other supports. She kind of reminds me of Orisa. She's kind of just a clusterfuck of different heroes put together. I like that her little quick melee sounds like a lightsaber, though. That, that's cool. So what does it say about Alaria mains? This is definitely a group of people who are maining this heroes mainly because she's very new. And anytime a new hero drops, you always have people who are loaded up trying to main them. Alari is no different. I imagine within the coming months when more nerfs follow, she will, like, probably just not really have anyone that plays her too much. I know a lot of people at the higher ranks play her solely because you can just build entire teams around the healing pylon, and get but a bad Alari player is truly one of the worst players you could ever have on your team. Because all you all they can really do is heal bot, and if the turret gets destroyed, they're not going to be healing very effectively. I will say there will probably be a lot of female Alari players who just play her because she's cute and everything, and they like her vibe and they like that one pajama skin and that's really about it it's weird i've never seen a hero that is specifically just for casuals or just for sweats she requires a lot of coordination to succeed but if you do have the coordination she works very very well I've always said nice things about Sigma mains, and uh, things have changed a little bit. Not because I think Sigma mains are suddenly worse at the game, or not, you know, as cool and epic and everything, and it's mysterious, but mainly just because the higher end of the game is dominated by Sigma as it currently stands. You could almost say there's a Sigma around him. Like, Stigma? Kill yourself! Sigma, in a way, is a perfect name for him, because I know a lot of Sigma mains unironically do see themselves in those Patrick Bateman edits. And look, yes, he is one of the coolest characters in the game. I love his lore, I love his personality, I love all of his interactions with the other characters, and I hope we get to learn more about him. He is kind of, to me, the Swiss Army Knife tank. He can do basically everything. You're not a true Sigma Giga Chat unless you've used his ult to escape a situation where you got booped off the map, and then proceed to kill, like, two or three people when they least expect it. Like I said, though, a lot of people at the higher ranks of the game just play Sigma because, yeah, he can basically do everything. Sigma is one of the hardest characters in the entire game to play against because if you're playing in someone who is just really good at the game, 
It almost feels like there's nothing you can do. Can Sigma mains be toxic? Oh, you bet. They literally think the universe revolves around them, which is very fitting. If you start pumping healing into one of your DPS for even a second when they drop below half health, you will be fucking cussed out. You will, you will be smited by God. But I do feel that some Sigma mains, at least a little bit, earn some sort of right to be arrogant. A lot of, if you're a diehard genuine Sigma main, you don't play him just because he's a good character. You play him because he's a character you enjoy and a character that you love. Even when Sigma's quote unquote been out of the meta, he's still always just been your preferred tank. There is nothing more satisfying than actually being able to block an enemy Ryan who's trying to duel you with Sigma. Like blocking his ultimate with the Sigma shield is just a feeling, that, uh, a, a high that you always chase as a Sigma player. And rocking someone who's diving you just midair, just immediately getting that insta kill combo, it fuels your ego like nothing else. Also, I do have to feel partially biased towards Sigma, considering, you know, I made a theme song basically based off of his ultimate voice line, and it's uh, one of my most streamed songs ever, and it's uh, made me a lot of fans on uh, basically every music streaming platform. Surely you'd like to hear it, right? Turn up, you know. I don't ever stop grinding, my work be the death of me It got me screaming like, what is that melody? And I hear the demons, oh I hear them scheming But my mind is calm when the universe sings to me I don't ever stop grinding, my work be the death of me It got me screaming like, what is that melody? And I hear the demons, oh I hear them scheming But my mind is calm when the universe sings to me Genji mains have always been like one of the most known stereotypes in the Overwatch community. Edgy anime weeaboo person probably has an anime background, probably has some Genji merch or anime fucking keychain. Definitely one of the most horny sus motherfuckers you gon' meet. Will play Genji into situations where it is literally so brain dead and stupid to play Genji into. Is someone who doesn't just take Overwatch seriously, but basically every game they play. Anytime they hear a girl in voice chat, they're gonna be acting different, talking in a deeper voice, and sweating their ass off. And if there is ever a Genji on the enemy team who is better than them, it'll crush their ego for weeks. They will beg for support in Dragon Blade because they know once they ult that they are going to be the Riley Reed of the match and everyone is trying to get inside them. Because Genji is basically made out of fucking paper mache and sometimes when you're using Dragon Blade, it feels like you're hitting people with a fucking pool noodle. Anytime they're reading patch notes for the game, Games and they see the word Genji, they start to cry. Hell, it, when they're reading the patch notes and they see any sort of character that has a stun or slow or beam ability getting buffed, they cry because they know that the Genji economy is going to be going down just a little bit because of it. The pain will always continue. Always. Definitely someone who can play a, this is definitely someone who can play a wide variety of DPS, but Genji has always been their first love and they're not really strong enough to hold back the urge to play him every time they load into a match. Uh, poor Baptiste mains. They really, they really don't get a lot of love, do they? In terms of never getting new skins, new lore, how MAGA is coming out, and it feels like it barely anything new for Baptiste. Like, come on, show him my boy some love. On the real though, it really does feel like it has just gotten to the point where Baptiste is one of those heroes that is only made by a specific group of people, and you're not really going to see new Baptiste mains ever arise. In my last video, I kind of talked about the weird way that. Baptiste mains make me feel. And a lot of Baptiste mains in the comments had interesting things to say. Something about Baptiste mains always just gives me a off vibe. It's weird seeing people play this character because he's pretty good, but he's not better necessarily at anything as compared to other DPS. You always be seeing them just at the most random moments jump into the air and take like huge shots at you and just like fully burst you out of nowhere. But then sometimes you'll see a Baptiste main struggle to shoot like a Symmetra turret or just heal their teammate two feet in front of their face. And it always seems like somehow they have regen burst just always. Like, didn't you just use that? How do you have that again? Baptiste mains just the way that a lot of them usually usually never talk. They just talk through voice lines and they always are playing like a normal person, but then randomly just out of nowhere will just do something odd. I imagine most of them like throwing the immortality field. It reminds them of the way that they throw babies out of a moving car. This is someone who doesn't like playing passively, doesn't like playing aggressively. Sometimes I'm not even sure they like playing at all. 
but they will always be a Baptiste main. They, I think, love his character, assuming Baptiste mains are capable of love. They can kind of do everything in a way, but they always use their abilities in the weird unintended way. Sometimes they pop amp wall just because someone in the back line is bothering them and they just want to get rid of them. Sometimes they just pop it as a scare tactic. They're always trying to be a good support, but something inside of them just is yearning and destined for something more. A good Zarya main is always a player you really need to look out for. Their tracking is probably better than any DPS player you're going to see, and somehow they always have an extra bubble for a teammate when it is needed. I have met some very toxic Zarya mains though, and that is mainly because they want their team to get their shit in gear and move their fucking ass. A true Zarya main doesn't get countered, they simply just play better, you know? Zarya can definitely be like the anchor of a team. A lot of the time Zarya player is can only be as good as their DPS. Because when Azaria doesn't have charge, it's kind of like throwing cake batter at a brick wall. Like, you're not going to be doing any damage. But even when a good Zarya main has like above like 65 charge, they will be lasering people. More specifically, a true, true Zarya main will be hitting them sweet, sweet direct impact shots. The most extreme fuck up you'll ever see a Zarya main making is when they like go to like solo grab a Pharah or an Echo or a Mercy in the air that they can't catch. And don't worry. That actually wasn't a fuck up, that was a calculated move on the Zarya's part, because they knew that their DPS wouldn't be able to kill them. Another thing a true Zarya main will excel at is kind of playing like chicken against the enemy team. A lot of the game when it comes to playing Zarya is just running around, walking straight directly into the enemy team and just biding your time and fucking waiting and seeing when they're actually gonna go for the shot on you so you can build up all of that charge. And also, this is one of those people who really get immersed into their character they're playing like i am talking having voice lines emotes and really getting into the mind of that hard-boiled russian super soldier also yes when it comes with any sort of character that is like zarya when there is a uh, you know male player playing them yeah the, the the dami mommy fetish is probably gonna come through strong as fuck I feel bad for Tracer. She was once the poster girl of Overwatch, and then now she has been replaced by a newer, younger, gayer hero. I'm not actually sure Kiriko's gay. I don't know. Now, I'm obviously releasing this like right around the time of the Tracer damage buff. I don't think this buff is going to be enough to really put Tracer like back to being like what she used to be. She is one of the hardest heroes in the game, with one of the worst ultimates in the game, and has some of the most counters in the game. Any single ability that stops the Tracer from moving for even like a quarter of a second just like hard counters this character. Let it be known, a Tracer main is the sweatiest Overwatch player you will come across, like bar none. You will never see anyone who is as sweaty as an actual diehard Tracer one trick. Do these people have an ego? Oh yes, they think they're way better than everyone else. In fact, I see a lot of Tracer mains who say they've quit or just even stopped playing Overwatch 2 because she's just honestly kind of not worth the effort on this game. Even when you are doing God's fucking work on Tracer, it feels like the only time you're ever going to be having fun is when you're playing against a team that is just awful It just doesn't understand how to stop a character like you. Like I said, they are the sweatiest Overwatch players and they will definitely be the most toxic. Sometimes from Tracer mains, you will see a wave of hate and you will see a wave of anger that you have never seen from another human being before. Tracer mains, they go into practice range and they, they don't even practice their aim. They don't even do aim trainers and shit. They do like blink training to like perfectly map their blinks and everything and they do pulse bomb aim training. You can always define exactly what kind of Tracer man you're playing against going by what kind of pulse bombs they stick. If they're constantly sticking pulse bombs, they're probably a safe player who only uses it right when they know they're actually about to stick someone and they're 100% sure, unless they're just really, really cracked. Or this is someone who basically lands no pulse bombs and everything, but always just throws them because they keep getting there quickly because they're just doing so much damage on Tracer. I refuse to believe that there is anyone who is new to Overwatch 2 manning Tracer because, I mean, look at this roster of easier and more effective characters. There's a small chance that you do main Tracer and everything, just solely because of the fact that she is like one of like the poster girls when it comes to LGBTQ representation in gaming, and I totally respect that.
Life Weaver has actually become pretty decent recently, even though I feel like he's kind of a weird antithesis of how a support should be designed, where it's way easier to run away and do damage on him than it is to actually like be like with your team and healing. I still think he's pretty good, but I have to go on a minor rant about this fucking tree. I know that they probably were like, all right, we've never had an ability before that could act as a barrier and a source of healing, but oh my God, this tree. This thing, if you are a smart Life Weaver man, and you strategically place this, you can block ungodly amounts of damage. And also, it's basically just like a mini Zenyatta ult. Like, it does so much healing. And it gives shields. <laughs> oh my god. God, there have definitely been a lot more life weaver mains who've been popping up recently since the buffs he's been getting, but I imagine they practiced him since they came out because they knew he was gonna get a lot of buffs. I know I forgot like a couple times that this video talked about oh, if a support is a bottom or not. Um, this is a spoiler alert. All supports are bottoms, especially life weaver mains. For sure. Except for Baptiste mains. I I'm not sure that Baptiste mains are interested in people sexually or even know what sex is. It's just... I will admit, life weaver mains are pretty good. Good at making my ass itch. Like, oh my fucking god. I need These motherfuckers are so annoying. They don't even, like, preemptively grip people. They wait until you have someone literally 2 HP and then grab them from across the map and bring them onto their little flower. There will always be a moment in a match where a life weaver main gets tired of having to charge up their healing shot and then hit someone with it, charge it up, and then hit someone with it. And then we'll eventually just go kind of berserk and just be like, all right. I remember predicting that Life Weaver mains were going to be very problematic and a lot of people were going to underestimate them. And uh, I was definitely right about that. Arisa mains certainly have a reputation. There are a lot of Overwatch players who would tell you that Arisa is the cringiest, most annoying, like, character alive. But I feel like a character like Arisa is, you know, somewhat of a necessary evil. And what I mean by that, like, I feel like in a game like Overwatch, there kind of needs to be a hero that is kind of just like a, well, fuck it, I I'm not dying anymore and I'm going to literally be an unstoppable killing machine kind of thing. If someone is a proficient Arisa user and they actually have good game sense, they are a very hard player to stop. I know there will always be the old Arisa mains who, for some ungodly reason, genuinely preferred the old version of Arisa, and I, I can't even for a moment imagine why. I think the new Terminator, like, ultra-killing machine version of Arisa is just so much more fun. Arisa mains do just genuinely love the feeling of getting just an utterly iconic spear on someone who's just trying to dive them and just shutting down an ult. And Arisa mains know that their ult is basically the call of death to anyone who hears it, and they'll be running away. So Arisa mains will always make it very hard for them to run away. In fact, Arisa mains just don't like it when you resist at all. To just stop resisting in general. You will never see an Orisa main that I would call the greatest Overwatch player in the world, especially considering the fact a lot of casuals play her. But a lot of casuals do also play her because she's one of the Omnic characters and they like playing the robot characters and something about the four-legged robot horse is cool to them. Ash players usually have an ego and are a definite, like, sweaty, like, fucking, you know, high rank DPS main, but they're usually much better than everyone else. They could be playing an easier character, like Soldier or Cassidy or Hit Scan, but no, they like Ash. Something about the feeling of booping someone in the air with Bob or Coach Gun and just shooting them out of the air with one perfect headshot, like you're duck hunting, just that feeling fuels the fire in them. Speaking of fire, a lot of Ash mains really would be nothing without Dynamite. I, I know they live for hitting five people with dynamite at one time and just setting the entire team ablaze. Another reason Ash fans love playing Ash is because, you know, they like having an extra teammate. Bob is their little buddy, their little homie, and whenever they actually see one of their healers or tanks supporting Bob, it just makes him feel so loved. And it makes the Ash main feel loved as well. I definitely do see some lower rank players main Ash, and I, I gotta say her skill is a little too high for that. Like, a lot of these lower rank Ash mains, if they do not have a mercy pocket, they are, they are nothing. They are reduced to Ash Holy shit, I didn't even mean to do that. A diehard Ash main learns how to perfect the perfect pattern of shooting the Ash shots. You shoot one is scoped in, two unscoped, two scoped in again, and then one unscoped. Just some sort of firing pattern like that. They, they legitimately try to memorize it. This absolutely is the player, if they take the game more seriously, to go into aim trainers and just try and sweat their 
fucking ass off. Definitely probably has a Mercy E duo because, you know, like I said, they know that they need it. Definitely like a diehard DPS hit scan main at heart. In fact, hit scan heroes are probably like the only thing this person plays. And, uh, you know, I like her because she's a sassy cowboy lady. And they definitely, definitely look at Ash in a, a, a certain light. That's, that's for sure. Look, I do always have some sort of level towards bias against Brigida. I've always liked her. But recently, I gotta admit, it has been absolutely struggling. It is a struggle to play Brig recently, which that's probably for the best, honestly. Like, if you're still really good at her, you can still get lots of value out of her. But for the most part, in the current meta game, just with how everything is and how Brig's shield keeps getting nerfed and all of her cooldowns and everything keep getting nerfed, it honestly just makes her feel like a nightmare to play. A good Brigida main doesn't care about any of this and, and just, just like swinging things makes to the face. This person is going to be absolutely lethal with their whip shot. They're going to be able to hit you midair, right in front of you, 80 feet away, underwater, in the astral plane. Like, they're, they're, they will find you with this whip shot somehow. This is a person who will somehow have, like, the most healing, the most damage, and the most damage mitigated in the entire lobby. This person will face a lot of situations where they get trapped, or punched, or stunned, or booped, or their shield gets broken in literally a quarter of a second, and then they're just like, well, I should swap but also, no. If they're a diehard old Brigida main, they probably love the fact that in Overwatch 2, she actually got like the shield bash stun back in her ultimate only, but they do genuinely love that. And when they pop that Brigida ultimate, it genuinely feels like they're being sent back to the good old days. A Brigida main is kind of the lone wolf of the team, always the one that's kind of feels always like they're on their own and going out on their own, but they still try to protect their tank, their DPS, their other support, everybody, especially their other support. They love the feeling of being a mini Reinhardt and absolutely just bulldozing people. And even even when they're not having fun, they're kind of having fun. Definitely a person who has multiple emotes ready to go and multiple voice lines and sprays equipped and everything and is probably a die-hard flex support. Also stream mace to the face by Big Citrus, Mwah. as many of you have. Doomfist mains, needless to say, are an enigma. There are a lot of them. Not all of them good, but there are a lot of them. And you always kind of think the same thing when you see a Doomfist main. This guy is not going to swap. He's probably going to be a decent player who always overextends and any time a support that could, you know, I guess reasonably save him are not able to save him. They cry and then do a backflip and then scream at their entire team in chat. The thing when it comes to Doomfist mains is that these people do legitimately see themselves as the main character. Like out of all the mains in Overwatch, they really do have main character syndrome. This is someone who's been playing exclusively Doomfist for a long time and probably was playing Doomfist way before they changed him in Overwatch 2. They practiced Doomfist parkour, they practiced like certain tech with him on like gliding on top of ceilings and everything. Like they know every little trick and niche about Doomfist. Are these people gonna be toxic? Oh yes, even at the lower ranks where they're probably very bad because I'm sorry, if you're like bronze or somewhere around there and you main Doomfist, I, there's just no way you're not dog shit. While I really do love playing Doomfist, uh, I would not consider myself ever anywhere near Doomfist main. I know how Doomfist mains feel because when they fuck up one one ability, like by seismic slam, and it just like bumps into an object, and their punch misses someone by a quarter fucking inch, or they have someone one health and they just miss the headshot. It haunts them. It just it just makes them feel insignificant and insecure. It eats them up for days. These people will like be in the enemy team's back line deep in their fucking throat, and if they don't get healed once, oh my god, they. <sighs> It's just over. I would say these are one of the mains that actually do just get better up as you go up the competitive ladder. Because most Doomfist mains are not Doomfist mains, they're Doomfist one tricks. And if you get one trick Doomfist top 500, you at least, at the very least, have to have an insane amount of game sense. But at the end of the day, if you're someone who just plays Doomfist for fun, you're probably just like, haha, big punch. Big, biggie punch. Also, the Meteor Strike buff is going to arise a lot of new Doomfist mains. So if you don't like Doomfist, uh, I'm sorry, you're going to be seeing a lot more of them. Bastion mains have always had a really negative stigma in the Overwatch community, and uh, recently there have been a lot more Bastion mains because for some reason they keep trying to make Bastion this like all the time, like viable character and everything, and like. I mean, I, I just don't know. There are definitely some Bastion mains who are still just playing him because they always, 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 always main Bastion. A lot of Bastion mains are kind of like Lucio mains, weirdly enough. They, they kind of see themselves as the funny guy, the, the funny friend, like, oh, I play big robot who changes into a turret and goes, Burr. 
Big chance they're definitely a Transformers fan. And they play all of the Omnic characters in the game because that is just a common theme. If you like maining one Omnic character, you probably like playing them all. Obviously, there is the notorious Bastion main Bastion Main, who everyone knows as a uh, very, very funny character. Just because you're doing good does not mean you should always play one character. And a lot of Bastion Mains are one trick ponies. And also, the f it's just annoying sometimes when you're like, all right, well, if this guy was just on any other character playing like 1% better, we would be winning this game easily. But Bastion Mains don't care. Their words are, we do not so. And some Bastion mains will legitimately take that character to their fucking grave. Like, they will just never swap, ever. You know, it's hard when you're dropping, like, 80,000 damage, and then, you know, your team's telling you to swap, because it's frustrating. Remember, the rules of playing this game are always adapt or play better. Ultimately, Bastion mains are funny little guys. Yeah. And they have a very aggressive play style. It's weird, I feel like you don't see Hanzo mains nearly as much anymore. And I'm not really sure why that is. Hanzo has gotten so many weird little changes over the course of history that, I don't know, I guess people probably just don't like him as much. I feel like a Hanzo main used to have a really specific stereotype back in the days of Overwatch 1. As shields became more prominent, I definitely think he's become played less. Back in the days of Overwatch 1, a Hanzo main was always considered a toxic man crybaby who could never pull the damage that they were claiming they could would blame everyone on the team telling them to swap before swapping, and was definitely some sort of, like, edgy uh, lord, edgelord weeaboo. Which, you know, for the most part, is still accurate to a lot of Hanzo mains today. If you see a diehard dedicated Hanzo main, this is probably gonna be one of the best players you have ever come across, and many times throughout the match, you're gonna question, is, is that guy cheating? How the fuck did he hit that shot? And a true, actual, legitimate Hanzo main uses Recon Arrow like it is a fucking sport. They actually use it for its intended purpose, and they use it correctly. A Hanzo main is definitely someone who's more of a flex DPS player. Like, they can basically play any hit scan sniper character in the entire game, but Hanzo is ultimately the character they prefer down to a court, down to a T, and whenever they're backed into a corner or whenever they really need to sweat, Hanzo is their first go-to. Every Hanzo main has their uh, opinions on the infamous Storm Arrow versus Scatter Arrow debate. Personally, I like Scatter Arrow, and I thought it was funny. A lot of people do go under the fact that yeah, a lot of Hanzo mains get lucky spam shots, and they're honestly not that far off from Junkrat mains in terms of just randomly getting a kill across the map because they shot in your direction, which is true. Hanzo mains, I definitely don't think are going to hide that fact, but they'll always argue that it takes a level of skill. Also, a Hanzo main is usually a Genji main for obvious reasons, and they like the really edgy skin, something like Dark Wolf or Demon, something like that. Also, this is the kind of person who takes the game so seriously and has been playing it for years and probably has like multiple competitive Smurf accounts. Ultimately, Hanzo mains are pretty good and everything you've heard about them being toxic and being very being very very rageful is true <laughs> very true <laughs> all right i'm gonna try and make the rest of these quick honestly because i feel like these ones in specific have not really changed at all so i'm gonna make these quick hopefully that's okay with you guys because i have a life to live in this video it takes years off my life. May mains are very interesting, and I do like them, and I do play a lot of May, and I will say that they are some of the people in Overwatch who definitely get, like, underestimated the most, because you don't expect a May main to be an insanely accurate skill shot, but a lot of them are. This person basically likes playing as a second tank and is a offensive strategist and genius with the wall, using it to always cut off opponents and save their teammates in the most interesting ways, getting the high ground when they need to, and denying someone the low ground when they need it. Definitely probably like May because she, uh, you know, more pushing for the cushion, you know? They like the cute brown haired girl with glasses and, uh, yeah, definitely someone who has multiple voice lines and emotes ready to go, one of those people. This is someone who honestly does relish in the torture of others. Even to this day, people still consider May to be a cancerous little demon bitch and May mains are fully aware of this and they do not care about the stereotype. In fact, they relish with it. Also, they throw Blizzard like they are fucking Peyton Manning or Tom Brady. They throw that shit across the entire map because they know the enemy is going to back up and walk into it. There's a lot of definite female players and support players who play May because, you know, for them, they're one of the easier quote unquote characters, but they actually do really well on May and, and genuinely get a lot of value out of her.
I always say in these videos that Reaper is like the edgiest Overwatch hero in the entire game. The Reaper is like the designed Linkin Park, uh, Monster Energy, Halo 3 playing, beanie wearing, Ford pickup truck or shitty fucking coupe from the 90s driving, Punisher skull wearing, black hoodie and jeans in the middle of summer wearing, long unkempt hair past your shoulders having, pressure nap until 3 a.m. having, uh, man, like that is the kind of person you are if you made this hero. You are the typical like OG edgelord, dark alt rock kid, which like it's true. Anyone I know who mains Reaper for the most part Part, at least was this kid once at one point in their life or still kind of is that kid today. Reaper mains are usually insanely good at the game, but definitely struggle more, quote unquote, on more skillful heroes like, you know, Ash or Widowmaker, for example. They stick to Reaper because they're good at it and they do not care that it's quote unquote an easier hero. This is someone who either gets five man or zero man death blossoms. There is little to no in between. I actually, these guys can get toxic, but it, I feel like it never comes from that bad of a place. They get mad, they're like, dude, what are you doing? Oh my god, how are we not winning this game? They're not ever, like, super trying to blame anyone in specific. They're more so just frustrated that they haven't already won the match yet. These people definitely are not the most skilled Overwatch mains, but they are some people who will absolutely solo carry a match in the right circumstances when they're able to counter the right enemy team. And yes, I know it's like a typical old Overwatch joke to call all Reaper mains edgy, and I've talked about this in all the videos I made, but it's true. It's just the one stereotype that's true. Just you are only drawn to this hero if you are that way or you were that way in the past secretly. It's just the case. One very common thing that I see a lot about Symmetra mains is that there's a lot of gay people who main her. I'm not really sure why exactly. I think it's maybe just because she she's serving and she's like the sassiest, like meanest character in the game. So it appeals to them. Symmetra mains are definitely not like super, 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 super skilled. I'm not gonna sit here and say that a Symmetra main is secretly a god at the game and, and they never get toxic, but I genuinely really like them still, regardless. These are someone who definitely understands and played Samus in Smash Bros and likes the Samus neutral B. And I imagine there are some old Symmetra mains who yearn for the old Symmetra back in the day, way back in the day, when, you know, her beam just locked onto people, which was stupid. A genuine Symmetra main is someone who has to understand Overwatch on a level that you don't, even if they're not very good at the game. They understand everything about how damaging shields works, how damaging enemies like items works, like Torgren turret or like a Lari turret, and they understand how much charge that gets them, they understand how much ammo it's gonna regenerate, and they understand the perfect combo just to one-shot people while fully running them with a fully charged laser beam that's shooting out their little blasts. These are people who either never try to get their teams to use the teleporters because they know that their teams are not gonna be coordinated enough to use them, or they're always trying to do the most like sussy imposter venting inside of your fucking ass shit with the teleporters where you randomly just like, oh, why are there five? Having a Symmetra one trick can, yeah, be pretty fucking cringe, but, but, if you are able to have, if you're able to work around them and they're going against a comp that can actually counter, it, it's probably just a free win for you. They're gonna have pretty good tracking and they're going to know how to play Symmetra perfectly and always set up a car wash and a death trap in the exact right spot where no one's gonna be able to destroy the turrets. And uh, yeah, it's just gonna be miserable for the enemy team and Symmetra mains uh, probably do relish in that, for sure. <laughs> Torbjorn main is definitely someone kind of like a Symmetra or a May main. I definitely relish in the fact that the enemy team is just not having a good time playing against them. They like playing the turret gnome in any game where there is a turret gnome, like Heimerdinger in League of Legends, Killjoy in Valorant, of course, NG in TF2. Also, I noticed that a lot of Torbjorn mains are, have surprisingly good mechanical skill with their aim and everything. Like, they, they can actually aim well. The little single hot Cheeto they fire out of their gun, like, they can do some absolutely crazy shit with it. I actually do play a fair amount of Tor myself just because he's one of those heroes that's like, well, I can take a bit of a break this game. Just the general concept of having having a turret that people have to destroy, it, it goes a long way and people, even if your turret is averaging like, mm, like 20 damage every minute, putting it in a spot where it's annoying for people to have to shoot it and making them back off is huge. And Torb mains know this, they, they're, they're, the, they're the architects of the battlefield. Except for when it comes to using their ult, they just like coming all over the place and definitely will make some sort of joke about coming all over the place. And I don't blame them. Every time I Torb ult and all my friends Torb ult, we do the exact same thing. We come all over the place and make a joke about the fact that Torb's giant girthy fucking cock is coming all over the place. I could probably make more jokes about Torbjorn mains, but I feel like Torbjorn mains are pretty sufficiently happy with what I just said about them. 
So yeah. Widowmaker mains a toxic one tricks who take every single competitive game very seriously. They might be really good. In fact, they might be some of the best Overwatch players you will ever see. They definitely do aim trainers and they have played a variety of FPS games. Overwatch is always the one they come back to. They do Widow Headshot only and things like that all the time. They genuinely just love Widowmaker uh, for a lot of reasons. They could be a female player who plays Widowmaker because they just, you know, I mean, even if you're a straight woman, look at her. I've always made these jokes. You all know I'm right. God's gift to gaming, Widowmaker. This is someone who will never swap and justify it by the amount of picks they're getting, but, you know, to be fair, if a Widowmaker main is getting one or two picks every fight, they're probably right to be toxic. Like, they're doing enough for the team, as long as, you know, Mercy isn't fucking resing everything. Widowmaker mains have a despise for Mercy mains. They don't care that a large majority of the community has always said Widowmaker is a broken hero. They justify it behind, get good, I'm better than you, and hey... I honestly too much cannot blame them. Definitely someone who goes for hook shots a thousand percent of the time, a thousand percent of the time. Will they ever hit them? Mm, probably not really, but hey, that doesn't change the fact that they still go for it. And we end on Wrecking Ball. Holy shit, Hammond, as everyone knows him. If you watched the last two of these videos, you would know that I made a song called Hammond that also has been getting a lot of streams on platforms and people actually seem to like. And I could talk about how a lot of him and one tricks are toxic throwers who are shit and sometimes ruin the experience for everyone, but I don't choose to see that. I choose to see that Hammond mains are the ultimate giga chads who like bending the rules of the game in their favor and just having the best time being themselves. Let it begin, I'm rolling in. To be this good should be a sin, running against me is a race that you'll never win. Puppets, I'm a dick, I need a ventriloquist. I'm what gonna do it my way, I'll drop your ass like Kanye. Thank you guys, holy fuck, for watching that. Um, Hopefully you guys enjoyed that and I was able to make that hopefully as good as the last two videos. And I'm excited to see everyone play season eight. There's a lot of great changes we have coming up, like new weapon skins and tons and tons of new skins, a general new ways to earn skins. I am excited for what Blizzard has planned, and I'm excited that so far I haven't given up on this game. Obviously, I plugged it earlier in the video, but please, 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 I, I don't like begging, but please, Go in the comments below and go in the description below and please follow my Twitch. You know, have the uh, bell turned on next to the subscribe button on YouTube and everything because I am streaming weekly on this channel trying to save Overwatch. I'm going to be doing a lot of community events where I am playing with fans and everything or doing clip reviews and everything. And if you want to send your clips in for me to review on stream, make sure you're in the community discord. And if you liked any of the music you heard in this video or just want to support a fellow up and coming artist, um, you know. Link in the description of my Spotify to do that. Let me know if I got anything wrong in this video or what you think about what I said. Maybe I said something wrong. And of course, let me know if there's something about your main that I missed or something that I should do for the next video or any suggestions for any future Overwatch videos that I'm going to be trying to upload weekly here on this channel. Thank you guys so much. Excited for what season eight brings. I hope you're all having a great fucking day. I really do mean it. Also, if you did make it to the end of this video and listen to that spiel and listen to like the entire video, Please comment, I am one with the orange, as I have done for previous videos. Please comment, I am one with the orange, and I will like and heart your comment and pin it and everything, and thank you so much. I really appreciate that genuine support, you psycho. I love you. I've been Big Citrus, and have a damn good one.